Hello everyone, you're on the Codefinity channel, and today we're going to teach you how to work with one of the most popular Python libraries for working with databases, SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is a Python library that simplifies the work with databases, using the ORM, Object Relation Mapping, paradigm. This means that Sklalchemy allows us to work with databases using an object-oriented approach. We can work with database tables as if they were objects in Python. Before we get started, let's talk about the advantages of using ORM over SQL queries. First of all, it allows us to write more understandable and maintainable code. Instead of complex SQL queries, we can simply work with Python objects, which are more understandable and pleasant to work with. In addition, SQL Alchemy provides code portability. This means that you can easily switch from one type of database to another, without changing the basic logic of your software. For example, you may develop your application with SQLite, and then at the end of development, you may want to switch to MySQL or Postgres. Using SQL Alchemy, you can easily switch from one database to another without changing the code significantly. Before we dive into the study of this library, we need to install it. It's very simple, and I'll show you how to do it. First, let's choose a place where we will store our project. Next, let's open the terminal. For me, it opened automatically. If it doesn't open automatically for you, just click on this button in the upper right corner. Now we need to create and activate a virtual environment. The virtual environment is the place where we will install our library. On macOS, Linux and Windows, the commands for creating and activating this environment will be different. For other operating systems, you can find the corresponding commands in the description below the video. The first team. This team will create a virtual environment. To run the command, just press the enter key. If this command doesn't work for you, like it did for me, then try writing Python 3 instead of Python. Then the command should work. Notice that now we have a new folder in our working directory called myNV. This is the folder that contains our virtual environment. Now let's activate our environment. And let's install the library. And that's it. If you see a message about the successful completion of the installation, as I did, it means that SQL Alchemy is now ready to use. Let's create a Python file in which we will write our code. To connect to the database, we need the create engine function. We will import it from the SQL Alchemy library that we installed earlier, and we will connect to it. By the way, at this stage, we don't have a SQLite database created yet. We will create it a couple of steps later. In any case, at this stage, regardless of whether we have an existing database or not, it won't make much difference to us. The argument of this function is that we will connect to the database. We indicate what kind of database it is, in our case SQLite, and then a colon, triple slash, and the name of our database and how we will name our file, and the .db extension. The next argument is no longer necessary. I will simply enter echo true to see the logs of our database in the terminal. This is a pretty useful parameter. It allows us to optimize the performance of our database. In general, this is all we have already connected. But for example, for a Postgres database or a MySQL database, the connection will be a little different, so let's see how it will work for them. In principle, it's almost the same, but you still need to specify the port on which you will connect to the database. The name of the database is the same as the password to our database. The following steps are required to simply create any table. We are now importing the function that we need to create a base class object for our tables. In the future, we will inherit from this class or already have in our class some operations that we can do with tables. We named our class product, let's also name our table product. This is the simple way we can name our table. Table name is equal to 
and indicates the name of the table in quotes. Let's think about what information about products we need to store in the database at all. The first is the ID, a unique identifier. The second is the name of the product. Let's also add the date of creation of this product or the date of manufacture. Our product must have a price. And there must be a field that will contain information about whether we have this product in stock. Now, I want to import the data types that we will need for our table in order to record all these fields in this table. First, for ID, we definitely need integers. This is the integer data type. For name, we need a string data type. For created at, we need a data type that stores the date. For the price, we need a float data type. And for our last parameter, we need a boolean data type. These are by the way the most popular data types. They will be enough to write most simple programs. The first field of our table will be the ID. The ID must be unique. By the way, we have not imported the column yet. This class is needed to create the columns for our table. So, ID is the name of our column, we use the column class. Next, we specify the data type, in our case it is integer, and then we specify the optional attributes, such as, for example, in our case, primary key, that is, a unique identifier. In our case, we will choose true, because the ID must be this unique identifier. It's almost the same with the name field, but, again, for the name field, we need a different data type and we don't need to create a primary key because we already have a primary key. But for the string, you must specify the number of maximum characters. Let's specify 120. I think that will be enough. And let's add an optional field that will indicate whether this field can be empty. Let's prohibit making this field empty because all products must have a name. Regarding the date of manufacture of the product, it is very convenient to use the default parameter along with the production date. Default is the default value. Of course all products will not have the same date of manufacture, but we can use the data time library so that when we create a class object, the date of manufacture of the product, for example, is added to the database. That is, as soon as we add an object, it automatically determines what date it is and writes to this field. We just need to set the price and availability fields. For these fields, it will be difficult to single out very important parameters in general, so we will simply say that the price is mandatory and that the product is out of stock by default. Now, after these simple steps, our table is ready and we can use the following command or we can create a database. After that we run the code. And as you can see, in the folder with our project, a file with the db extension appears. This is our database. In this part of the video, we'll be adding records to the database, so I suggest rewriting our table a bit to make it simpler and create one new record with minimal time. Before we start creating objects, we need to import a session. A session is an object that is needed to open and close a database correctly. In general, if you have worked with databases, for example, with the Sklite 3 library, then there is a similar thing called a cursor. If not, then it's okay, just watch. Repeat the code with me and you will understand and see how it all works in practice. Now we can finally start creating users, that is, objects of the user class, for our table in the database. In fact, only the name is a required parameter because the ID is created automatically since it is in the primary key. We have created two objects. 
Thanks to the add all method, we can add a list of objects to the database. Next, we need to commit, use the commit method and close our session. This will add these records to our database. By the way, for those who use VS Code, there is a very useful plugin that allows you to view the contents of database files. Just install this plugin, find it in the catalog by its name, and then just click on the file you need, select our plugin from the list and look at the contents of the file. Here we see the same two records that we added. Let's learn how to get a record from the database. First, let's get all the records about our users. Let's remove all the pieces of code that we needed to add these users. Our code will return a list of users, so we call the change users, wrap it in session, query. Next, in parentheses, we indicate which model we are wrapping to, from which we want to get the requests. Next, select all with a dot if you want to get all users. Now let's just display all these users on the screen. This is not difficult, since the users list stores objects of the user class and all we have to do is display the names of the users. It almost always makes no sense to display all the records from a table since the page rarely displays more than 50. And our database can have many thousands of different unique users. To do this, we can use a filter in the query instead of the all method. It allows us to get some users who meet certain conditions. For example, they have the appropriate name. For example, Alex. If we want to get all such users who meet this condition, then we will use the all method again. Regardless of the number of users, this function will still return the list. So let's go through our users list again with the for loop and print the name of each of these users. No miracle happened. As far as we remember, we had only one user named Alex. Therefore, we saw only one such record here. Updating a record in SQL Alchemy is also very easy. In this code example, I got all the users not named Ale. Let's remove the zero user from this list. And let's then display his name in the terminal before and after the changes to make sure that everything worked. Just set the name property to a different value. And if we run our code, we'll see in the terminal that everything worked. But that's not all, because we haven't made changes to the database yet we need to access the session and use the commit method to make sure that the changes are saved to the database. Now, if we refresh the page, we will see that the changes have been saved. Deleting records from the database is also very easy. Let's get some user out of the table and delete it. Call the session, the delete method, pass the change in which the user is stored, and commit the changes to the database. Now, if we open the table before running the code, we will still see this user, but after we run the code, the user will be deleted. These are the basic skills of working with SQL Alchemy. They will allow us to write our own pet projects, and SQL Alchemy is often used in backend frameworks, such as Flask. The Codefinity platform has courses on Flask. Thanks to them, and basic knowledge of SQL Alchemy, you will be able to create your own full-fledged websites.